Hello, everyone. Thanks very much for joining. I'm Carl Trollinger with Syngenta Flowers and will give you an overview of our geraniums portfolio. Then go more into depth about the interspecific geranium assortments for 2020-2021. Calliope large, Calliope medium. There are quite a few new, really interesting new colors in the mojo geraniums, which is going to be really important. The same thing for the Marxist geraniums, quite a few really nice new colors. And then a little bit, I will talk about pretty little. I will not cover today the regular cascades, blizzards, ivy geraniums, the ivy leaks, the caliente, and the new caldera which are more of a spreading caliente type. So first, the various pot sizes relative to vigor of the green leaf and dark leaf geraniums. At the bottom you see from compact to vigorous, correspondingly jumbo packs and smaller pots over medium sized containers to large size containers. We do not have compact series of the green leaf geraniums anymore. The compact series are now Tango and Moxi. A few words on the Americanas. Americanas are medium to vigorous. They're on the market now for over 20, 25 years. Growers really like them. They're proven, they're excellent in the heat. And if a price point has to be met, and if density on the bench is important, the Americanas are an excellent choice. If all the interspecific advantages are asked for, then Calliope medium is fantastic. That's currently the most growing geranium series that we've in the assortment by far. And the reason for that is Calliope medium has a more compact habit than Calliope large, and therefore fits really well into the main size containers that are grown. We have the same color range as Calliope large and the same vibrant new colors and new bicolors. The big advantage of Calliope medium and large is that the branching is exceptional. So there are more flowers. And the other nice thing is that as the summer progresses, the plant keeps on growing nicely and fills in and doesn't open up. Another advantage is that Calliope, because of their breeding, are more tolerant to low pH toxicity. So that's important for the growers. Then more bigger than Americana is the Rocky Mountain series. The Rocky Mountain series are also very well known. They're very uniform habit-wise, very heat tolerant, so are also grown in Southern Florida. And for better price point and for higher density, the Rocky Mountains work really well. A, lo a lot of growers really like them. The interspecifics, very similar to Calliope medium, just larger. And so for bigger baskets, bigger containers, large combination containers, which are becoming more and more important, and performance in the field, Calliope large outstanding. So if planted in beds, they reach a certain height and then they go wide. So they cover areas much better than any other geranium. Then the dark leaf geranium. Pretty little is compact, very nice because of the flower coverage that lasts from beginning until end. If a certain price point has to be met and for tighter spacing on the bench, Tango is outstanding. Tango has a large following. It's a very good series, well-proven with a wide color range, 
and a large following. If an interspecific geranium is needed because of the flower power, the better branching, better pH tolerance, and all the other advantages, then Moxie is the way to go. The big advantage is also that the contrast of those brilliant colors and the really nice bicolors is just phenomenal and sometimes more impressive even than on Calliope medium. So Calliope, Calliope medium is perfect, but the dark foliage of Moxie and also of Mocho uh, will be very attractive for a variety of reasons. Then the Mocho. That is a new series. So far, we had Mocho Dark Red, which performed really well everywhere. We had no problems at any trials. So this was a big winner. You see the plant here to the left, brilliant red color, dark red, very similar to Calliope Dark Red. A little bit different, but very similar. I will talk about the advantages of the Mochos later on. But one big thing is, because the dark foliage, and there must be something else going on, they can do really well under low fertilizer conditions. Next, I will talk about the decision tree between zonal and interspecific geraniums. If a grower wants small containers, then for high density growing, the wide color range and a good price point, Tango is the way to go. If consumer performance, excellent baskets, and overall the habit and the flowering, and especially the flower colors are critical, then Moxie is outstanding. So Moxie will gain importance as we go along, and especially as we have the new colors now. Then Pretty Little is just stunning. The flower display from the beginning until end, the plants are always covered with flowers. And it's also very early to flower. So a great plant for retail programs and deco containers. In the medium-sized containers, Americana, as I said before, medium vigor, some are a little bit more vigorous, like the Americana Dark Red. If a certain price point is important and density on the bench, then Americana is really good for, mediums, for medium container sizes. Mojo is outstanding for many reasons. It has really nice dark foliage. It's very heat tolerant. As I mentioned before, even under low fertilizer conditions, they do really well. At least that's what we saw so far with uh, Mojo Dark Red, and I will show you some pictures afterwards. So consumer performance, brilliant colors, new bike colors, in a very nice tight habit, Mojo is fantastic. So this series is gonna grow a lot. Calliope Medium, in the medium segment of geraniums, this is growing strongly. So overall, we see the tendency of Calliope large growing, but Calliope medium is growing by leaps and bounds. It has a nice green foliage, consumer performance is outstanding, the habit tight, doesn't open up, very good flowering and exceptional colors true dark reds, true burgundies, and very interesting bicolors. Then in the large containers, it's Rocky Mountains for strong vigor, good price point, and high density on the bench as compared to Calliope Large. Calliope Large gets wider as the branching is so good, and Calliope Large also tends to grow to a certain height and then grows more to the width. But that happens more later on for the consumer, either in pots or in the beds. So great for retail programs, outstanding consumer performance. And as I mentioned before, habit, the flowering, colors, 
new colors just as standing. So Calliope's, Calliope medium, Motro, and Moxie are the future of geraniums. And here, Calliope large dark red, Moxie pink, nice deep green color, and also a very nice zone. So I just want to give you an overview of the competitor series and the matching Syngenta flower series. To the left is that what's currently grown from these breeding companies, looking at the vigor and the foliage color, they can be converted to the following varieties here, which are more space efficient and meet a better price point. And then if consumer performance like vibrant and new bicolors and flower power and all the other things are priority, then these would be the choices. Let's just go to the compact ones, compact dark leaf, that would be Presto, Candy Idols, and Moonlight. For all those, Tango is a really good substitution and matches, matches them really well and is just overall a really good choice to go to. Tangos are proven, Growers really like them. Uh, the ones in the past we had that didn't quite match, they're not there anymore. So it's a really nice, well-matching series with all the major colors. Then, by the way, we are still working on bringing new colors in tangos to the market. Like here, for example, tank of pink eyes, and there are gonna be a variety of others. Then, Moxie is our compact, in the specific choice, you will see all the new colors later. Then if Savannah and Fantasia are grown, they are medium vigorous with dark foliage. Tango is a great choice to go against them. And then Motro is the perfect choice. As I mentioned before, all the advantages. So this is if consumer preference is key. Then in the medium series, it's Sunrise, Dynamo, and Survivor. It would be Americana as the space efficient and price point importance variety, uh, series, I'm sorry. And then Calliope Medium for the best consumer, uh, consumer performance. And then on the more vigorous, it would be Patriot, Galaxy, and Big Ease. So they are vigorous and green leaf. The choice would be Rocky Mountain for space efficiency and to meet a certain price point. And then for the best consumer performance, it's Calliope Lodge. Just wanted to point out Calliope Lodge Lavender Splash, just an outstanding variety. It's a really nice lavender with a perfect magenta eye. So if you have never tried it, it's definitely one that's worth trialing. This slide shows the key colors of the various geranium series. In Calliope Large, that is the list of the most important colors, and they're all matching really well. Then Calliope Medium, the same thing. These are the key colors. They match habit and flower timing wise really well. And on Moxie, we added three new varieties that are really, really important. Moxie White will be the most important compact white on the market. I have no doubt about it. The contrast of the foliage and the clean white that, we, uh, that our breeder have been able to achieve are outstanding. Also flower power, tremendous. Also, I had them on my porch together with the Numochos very tolerant to whatever conditions. So take the rain pretty well, and even under low fertilizer environments, they grow really well. Orange, really nice new orange, and also violet, very nice. Then on the mochos, we had mojo dark red so far. It did very well everywhere. And I showed some pictures afterwards. So we are really happy to see how well it did. Even in the South, just continued to grow. Although it's more compact to medium, so not quite as vigorous, 
as calliope medium. In the south, it grew to the same size, but uh, under more northern conditions, it will be more compact. So three new colors, cranberry splash, an outstanding new bicolor, orange, a really nice orange, and currently savannah, also orange, is really important. So the mojo orange and the moxie orange will be excellent choices against it. The branching is better because it's interspecific, and also the color is more intense. Then mojo salmon, a really nice salmon. And as in Moxie White Improved, the new Mojo White is fantastic. It's a little bit more vigorous than the other Mojos. The same thing with the Moxie White, it's a little bit more vigorous. So, but both of them are gonna be very, very important whites uh, in the compact to medium uh, hot size. Then the Sonals in the Americanas, we added Scarlet Fire, a really nice orange scarlet color. So originally we thought about calling it deep orange, but it's really uh, between orange and scarlet. So we call it orange uh, scarlet fire. It's a really nice color, performs really well and fits really well into that series. Dark red is a little bit more vigorous, white splash more compact, but they are also important and growers want them, know them, so they are included in the core assortment. The Rocky Mountains, they're all very similar habit-wise and timing-wise, and the Tangos also quite similar. The pink ice, new and looks really sharp. So all of those Tangos are really the best of the best. So if somebody says, give me your eight, nine, 10, yeah, here in this case it's nine, then, I would definitely recommend to go with these. Here's just Americana Lavender Splash, which is a really nice uh, bicolor. It's not in the core assortment, but it's a really good color. So I highly recommend it to add it to it. The next picture shows our trial field in the middle of August in Gilroy. The plants just suffered extreme heat for about one week, 105 degrees, which happens quite frequently in the beginning of August in Gilroy. And the plants don't suffer. I mean, these are all interspecific geraniums. There are no regular zonals in there. If these would be zonals, the color would be maybe a third or at the most a half. And also they wouldn't be fully covered with flowers. Just to show you here, that's Calliope dark red. That's Calliope medium dark red. So it's more compact. It's a little bit wider than it's tall. And Calliope large dark red is a little taller than Calliope medium dark red, but wider. So all the Calliope lodges are wider. So you can easily see them here and here. So anything that goes wide is a Calliope lodge. That comes from the breeding and the vigor, uh, that's how they grow. And I also wanted to show some of the really interesting new bicolors that we can get with interspecific breeding. That's Mocho Cranberry Splash, fantastic bicolor, nice magenta with burgundy eye, looks incredible. Then Mocho White, an outstanding white, this picture doesn't do it justice. It's a really brilliant white. And the foliage is outstanding. So yellowing, botrytis sensitivity, um, <clears throat> clearly improved. And here, the pink flame, Calliope medium pink flame, really nice bicolor that doesn't exist in zonals. So all the bicolors that we're coming out with are really spectacular. So to sum it up again, uh, much more vibrant colors. We have true dark reds and burgundies, unique bicolors, better branching, increased flower power, exceptional outdoor performance, and reduced low pH sensitivity, which is really important as when the pH drops in zonals, uh, it's a big problem and hard to correct. So the calliopes are regarding pH sensitivity, 
uh, about 0.2 below the regular sonal. So if sonals, um, if you're shooting for 6.0, then calliopes can tolerate a 5.8. So they're anywhere, yeah, kind of in the middle between the sonals and the ivies. This picture shows how well the interspecific geraniums uh, perform even in the southern conditions. This is North Carolina, late July. The plants had lots of rain, extreme heat, high humidity, and they still perform well. There's not much botrytis in here. The flower power is tremendous. And if you would walk in here, you wouldn't see what all happened to them. So they got several rain showers, pretty heavy ones, but they came back really quickly. So they lose a few, um, a few flower petals, but that's about it. I mean, some would try this, but not bad. This picture shows relative vigor from low to high. And you can see here, Pretty Little has the lowest figure, followed by Moxie. Mojo is kind of in between all of them, so compact to medium. And then Calliope Medium has medium vigor, and Calliope Large has high vigor. And that correlates to the relative flower timing. So the more vigorous in general, the slower to flower because the plant first has to build up the structure. So Calliope Lodge is slower to flower, but the breeder, of course, is working on making them earlier. So a week earlier would be nice. Uh, more probably won't happen because the plant has to build the base. So Calliope Lodge, slower, then Calliope Medium flowers quicker. Mocho flowers a little quicker than Calliope Medium, but that's just in general. There are some Calliope Mediums that are, uh, are already flowering early, and also some Mochos. So the trend's gonna go to early flowering. Then the Moxies are again as a serious earlier flowering than the Mochos, and the Pretty Little, of course, is the fastest. So it doesn't grow much anymore, it just throws out flowers. Just a few comments on recommended pot sizes. Pretty little is really recommended for packs, pints, and quarts. The moxie, because they're more vigorous, can also be grown in pints, also in three or six packs, and up to a six inch. So it can be grown in an eight inch, but the sweet spot is here. For Mojo, the sweet spot is between a six inch and a 10 inch. It can be grown in a quart. It can also be grown in a 12 inch, but that's ideal. Calliope medium, the same thing. It can be grown in smaller pots, but ideal is for six inch to 12 inch. And the Calliope large, ideal from eight inch to 14 inch and larger. So the recommended landscape uses for Moxie, Pretty Little, Mocho, and Calliope geraniums. Just wanted to point out what's really important. Yes, the geraniums are pretty drought tolerant, which means they can handle it, but they of course don't like it. So it's really important for the best performance to keep them well watered and to avoid dry media. If geraniums dry out completely, they don't die, but they're gonna get some yellow foliage and until they're in full flower again, it's gonna take about two weeks. So it's important to keep them well watered and also well fertilized. So it's really good and important to include a slow release fertilizer, ideally five to six months release into the soil or potting mix or to drop this, uh, top dress it. And it's medium to high rates, because geraniums are high, high feeders. So just quickly, Pretty Little and Moxie, good for anything that's fairly small. So six to 10 inch patio pots, 
smaller hanging baskets, smaller combos, landscape borders. And then the Motro and Calliope medium are for medium-sized containers, which is really the majority of the market. So 10 to 14 inch patio bo- uh, pots, 10 to 14 inch hanging baskets, large plant boxes, and medium combos, which are becoming more and more important. They are good in the landscape beds, but for landscape beds, ideal is Calliope Lodge because it just spreads more, it covers more, and uh, they just perform better. So Calliope Lodge, excellent for bigger patio pots, for large hanging baskets, for landscape beds, and large combination containers. Calliope Lodge cannot be overgrown by any strong, vigorous petunias or anything else. So Calliope Lodge is so strong, it will not be covered by other plants. So that's a big advantage. Also because the branching is so so tight, uh, it's gonna fill the space and other plants grow through it, but will not overpower it. Very similar for the medium combos. Of course, if you put the vigorous petunia in there, then yes, you're gonna outgrow the others. So it's important to use more compact spring annuals in here, the vigorous spring annuals can be grown well together with Calliope Lodge. <clears throat> so the expected garden sizes, three to little will be about, so that's all ideal when watered properly and fertilized properly. So it will get about 10 inches tall at the most and 12 inches wide. If it's not fed properly and watered properly, of course, you're gonna stay more compact. The moxie is 12 to 14 inches, so 12 inches tall, 14 inches wide. The mochos, 13 inches tall, 15 inches wide. The calliope medium, just another inch taller maybe, but it gets more wider, so 18 inches as compared to the mochos in general. Mochos can grow vigorous, as, as we saw it in the south. And Calliope Lodge then, a little bit taller, 15 inches and wider, 22 inches. So you can even get up to 25 inches. But of course, that's under good conditions. This slide shows the whole assortment of Calliope Lodge here. Calliope Medium, and you see the added Calliope medium cherry, and I show pictures afterwards. The mojos, here the four new cranberry, orange, salmon, and white. And the moxies. Added the orange, the violet, and the white improved. So for nice baskets, 12 to 14 inch, or even bigger, Calliope large is outstanding. It covers it well, it also trails down. If that would be Calliope medium, it would be more mounding. So Calliope large, because of its bigger, they're gonna trail, which is a real big advantage. So this pot has four Calliope large geraniums. What's important to get a really nice basket like that is sufficient early growth regulation, ideally good, nice compact cuttings, and then florel, about 10 days after planting and a week later. If needed, other growth regulators afterwards, like Cycocell or maybe one Cycocell B9, that's sufficient. The key is to do early growth regulation. And then, of course, medium to high fertilization. Calliope Large Dark Red and Cascade White, outstanding combination. More and more growers are growing it. First of all, it looks just fantastic. And the other thing is, as it goes through the summer, it's always gonna look like that. Because Calliope Lodge Dark Red will not open up, Cascade White will not open up. So it's gonna fill in, always gonna be a full container. The other nice thing is, they have the same feed and pH requirements. So 
it's a perfect combination. Now, Cascade White, of course, works really well with all the other Calliope Lodge colors. And all the other Cascades we have, and the Blizzards, and the Caliente, and the Calderas, also work really well with Calliope Lodge. So this all can be trialed and see what grows like best, but there are a lot of opportunities. Just a few remarks on what works really well under hot conditions and what works better under cooler conditions. So for combinations with Calliope medium or Calliope large, if they are supposed to last really well in the summer under high heat conditions, then there are certain plants that we don't recommend, like Techno White Lobelia can handle the heat to a certain degree, but then just dies. So for more moderate conditions, the Techno White is fantastic. If it's hot, then we recommend the Bombay White, which works really nice. Or even better, I think, would be the Angelonias, the Caridas, and the Carida Cascade. Carida and Carida Cascade are not used as much as they should be used. They are very heat tolerant and look very attractive in combinations. So overall, Carida Purple is an outstanding Angelonia, looks good in all the trials, and Carida Cascade White works really well in combinations. So those two are my favorites but the other colors work too. So here you see a really nice combination of Calliope Large Lavender together with Euphoric White and Carita Purple. So Carita Purple is always looking good and a great item to combine with all kinds of colors. I mean, this can be Calliope Medium White or Calliope large, whatever the color is, this is gonna look good. So I just wanted to make a point. Try out Carida purple. Just wanted to show a few of the introductions from 2017-18. Calliope large lavender was a very important introduction. Also Calliope large lavender mega splash. And as I mentioned before, the lavender color on the outside and the magenta eye, just a perfect combination. And then we have Calliope Lodge Hot Rose, which is a fantastic color and plant, lots of flowers, and Calliope Lodge Hot Pink works also really well. Calliope Lodge Rose Mega Splash is one of the all-time favorites. Uh, always covered with flowers, very similar to Calliope Medium Rose Mega Splash. So both Rose Mega Splashes are growing strongly and will continue to do so. Calliope Medium Cherry, new for 2020-21. It has a really nice cherry red color, large flower heads, also really nice florets, in dark green foliage with sown. So you're gonna see more of that in Calliope Medium, that the foliage gets darker with a nice zone. Overall, the Calliope Medium series, ideal for quart to 2.5 quarts, which are the core volume of the market. So for premium containers in that medium size, the go-to series, is definitely Calliope Medium. Calliope Medium assortment. As you can see here, all the colors are covered. What's really important to note is the bicolors, like Calliope Medium Rose Mega Splash, which is always covered with flowers. Calliope Medium Pink Flame, an exceptional variety with lots of demand. And the Calliope Medium Crimson Flame, really nice bicolor. So all these bicolors cannot be done in regular zonal geraniums. So they are really um, only to be had in the Calliope Medium or Calliope Lodge. 
The same thing with the brilliant reds, like the medium dark red or calliope medium, which is a very true red, or calliope medium cherry or burgundy. These colors don't exist in sonals. Also calliope medium white, really nice. And I just wanted to say a few words on calliope medium violet and calliope medium deep rose. Calliope medium violet is the strongest violet on the market. It's a little bit more compact. The flower heads are not quite as big as calliope medium deep rose. So the deep rose, the color is not as intense as the violet. The flower heads are a little bit bigger and the plant is a little bigger. So both are very nice varieties. If the best violet is required, then Calliope medium violet is the way to go. So next year, we're going to have lots more space in our farm in Mexico, and we will be able to build up enough of Calliope medium, which this year was a little hard. So Calliope medium sold really well, and we're going to build up more next year. Calliope medium pink flame, outstanding color. And if you look at all the buds coming, this is one cutting. So this is just exceptional. Wouldn't be possible with sounds. So lots of flowers, exceptional color, and performs really well. The same thing is true for Calliope medium white, a really nice white color, good medium green foliage, lots of flowers. Just keep in mind it's medium too vigorous. So it is more vigorous than other calliope medium. Therefore, it can also be used with the calliope large colors. And just so you know, in about one or two years, we will have calliope large white, which is a fantastic variety. So in all of our trials, it's extremely impressive. So that will come. Just a few comments on uh, combination containers. So Calliope medium pink flame, very versatile because it has a nice uh, light pink color outside. The magenta eye can combine with a lot of various colors. Same thing is true for Calliope medium crimson flame. It's the pink and the crimson color works really well with all kinds of colors. So this is great for all companion plants that are medium vigorous. One thing that becomes more and more important is to combine Calliope medium colors and Calliope large colors. The big advantage is that they have the same requirements for growth regulation, for fertilization, watering needs, so they always work really well together. The only thing to point out is combination containers without geraniums can tolerate bonsai wrenches. With geraniums, a light bonsai wrench of maybe 0.1 ppm on Calliope medium and maybe 0.25 ppm on Calliope large, that's all that's needed and more would be a problem. So again, on Calliope medium, maybe towards the end of the crop, a week before finishing, especially if they have to be held, works. And um, on Calliope large, 0.25. But 0.5 already is way too much. So it's, it's very delicate, and it's important to trial it first really well. Then a few words on Mocho geraniums. Mocho. We had Mojo dark red, and I show a really interesting slide afterwards. An excellent, vibrant, deep red color. Performs really well, great contrast to the foliage, and always keeps a nice habit. So a great performer. It's a few days later to flower than the others, but under highlight conditions, and if it's warm, that's not a problem. If it's fairly cloudy and cool, then uh, it's important to watch out for that and to plan for it. So it will take about a week longer than to flower. All the other ones are quite similar. The white is a little bit earlier to flower. 
And as I mentioned before, the white is outstanding. So it becomes almost vigorous once it really grows. Initially in the greenhouse, they're quite similar, but outside the Mojo white will be more vigorous than the other ones. But we said, as long as they are the same or about the same in the greenhouse, then that works. So Mojo Cranberry Splash, really nice bicolor, great magenta with burgundy. Mojo Orange, fantastic. Mojo Salmon also, great deep salmon. So here's a picture of Mojo Dark Red. This plant had been grown with about 200 parts per million of a 15, 515, and it just grew phenomenally, uh, never opened up. The foliage size doesn't get too big. Color is exceptional. So this is a winner. And what's really interesting, and we were kind of surprised to see that when we visited the trial at Penn State this year, we walked into the trial and here was Mojo Dark Grid and here were all the other geraniums in the trial. And initially we thought, what's going on here? It's, it's kind of, it doesn't make sense. Why does this one look so good? Yeah, it's, it's really more tolerant to low fertilizer. So obviously it can live with low feed and still throws out quite a bunch of flowers and has a really nice dark foliage. And here's a more close up. There's no yellowing, uh, no purpling, like here, for example, and still quite a bit of flowers. So of course, if that plant would have been fed properly, there would be many more flowers and larger flowers. But it's interesting to see that Mojo Dark Red can handle the, the low fertilizer pretty well and others not. So even a competitive variety with dark green foliage clearly shows deficiency, which means if that one shows deficiency, the feed is really on the very low side. Moxie. Moxie, we have really nice introductions, very similar uh, to the mochos. The Moxie orange is a stunning plant. Also Moxie violet and Moxie white is just fantastic. So very similar to Mojo white, this is a winner. And here are the Moxie assortment. These look about the same in the greenhouse habit-wise. But outside, the Moxie hot pink can get up to a size of a Calliope medium and looks stunning. Uh, the really nice hot pink color against the dark foliage is phenomenal. The same thing is true with Moxie White Improved. It's going to get more vigorous outside. But inside, they're about the same. But I just wanted to point out, if you see that, uh, the goal was to have them look about the same in the greenhouse. And if outside some are growing more vigorously, that's fine. Pretty little pink splash, always looking like that. So flowers early and once it's in flower and of course watered properly and fed properly, then it's gonna look like that all summer. As I mentioned initially, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Calientes. The big deal is since the introduction of Chrysler Lesco, which works really well to avoid yellow foliage and shattering of the flowers for up to three weeks. This will be a big thing for the Calientes. As the Calientes have single flowers, they suffer more in transit and on the retail bench. So if Alesco is sprayed a few days before shipping, then Flower retention after transport and at retail can be dramatically improved by up to three weeks. So, which is a big deal. Of course, that's not just true for the Calientes, but also for all the other geraniums and all the important spring annuals. So, try it out. We tried it 
in many trials, it always worked really well. And it's also very cost effective. So 12.8 ounces per 100 gallons, and that goes a long way. So just a few other comments. Caliente always performed really well in all the trials. This year at the CSU trials, the Caliente Coral Salmon, which is this plant, won the award for best interspecific terrarium. So the comments were impressive vigor, prolific flowering all season, and vibrant color. It basically looked like this until fall. Calientes are suitable for all climates and extreme heat, and are very floriferous all summer long. We have a full color range. I mean, Caliente Lavender is, I would say together with Calliope Medium Violet, one of the strongest colors we have. So this is outstanding. The best, the best lavender right now of all geraniums, I think. Caliente White was a really important new introduction, nice dark green foliage, uh, good flower color, and Caliente Fire improved outstanding everywhere. So it always has a perfect habit in all pot sizes. The branching is just tremendous. It's suitable for quartz to 14 inch containers, which is a big deal. And it doesn't need many growth regulators, maybe one or two psycho cells if needed, but that's it. So of course, no bonsai, that's really important. So. Calliope medium and large can tolerate some bonsai towards the end, but calientes not. So calientes make sure to not apply any bonsai at any stage of the crop. So psychocell is the way to go if any growth regulation is needed. The other big advantage is no re a removal of, uh, I'm sorry, of spent flowers is required because they're single flowered and they're self-cleaning. And again, Chrysler Lesco, a few days before shipping makes a big difference. And not just for Caliente, but also for all other geraniums and spring annuals, at least most of the spring annuals. One slide that shows really well the influence of Laurel on flowering. This trial was done at Speedling in Florida on Calliope medium geraniums. The only difference between the left side and the right side is that the left side received two floral applications at 350 parts per million after transplant, and the right side won 350 ppm floral spray after transplant. So this was done about 10 days after planting, and this crop is now eight weeks old. So there is more than six weeks after the floral application, and because of that, they flower really well. Now here the floral was done 10, 10 days after planting, and then a week later. So this is only about five and a half weeks after the last floral application. And they had two florals, so it of course accumulates. So the delay is quite significant. So this is really important to watch that. At least six weeks should be, um, should be between the last floral application and flowering. Ideally eight weeks under cooler and cloudy conditions. So lastly, just two more slides. The first one is on the influence of temperature on terrarium finishing. The constant is the daily light integral of all of, all of this I'm gonna talk about now, of 15 moles per day, which is pretty high, but the tendency is very similar, even if daily light integral would be 10 moles or five moles. The only thing would be that Time to finishing would be longer. So at a constant daily light integral of 15 moles, to change the average daily temperature to go from 62 to 78, 
leads to transplant to finish from 80 days down to 30 days. So just one example. If we start out with, let's say, a temperature of 62 degrees average daily temperature, then it would take over 70 days to flower from transplant to finish. If we will go four degrees higher, so to 66, and go up here, we would be at 55 days. So the four degrees difference results in two weeks difference flowering time. That's really important to know and to consider. Now, if the temperature would be risen to 74 degrees, then we would have maybe five days difference. So the sweet spot is really at around 70 degrees or so. And then afterwards, the difference is not as big anymore. So the difference is bigger under the cooler temperatures. So if you, for example, go to 76 average daily temperature, then it would take about 35 days. So which is really quick, but the difference is not as big if the temperature gets increased. This slide shows the influence of the amount of light on the finishing time at average daily temperature of 66 degrees. So this is the constant. So everything is 66 degrees average daily temperature. The variables are the daily light integral and the days from transplant to finish. So if, for example, the daily light integral is under cloudy conditions, let's say five moles per day, then it would take about 75 days from transplant to finish. If it's 10 moles per day, then it would be 60 days to finish. So the difference between five moles and 10 moles is about two weeks, a little bit more than two weeks. So that's really important. So if light conditions are poor, it's critical to think about uh, supplemental light. And there are many options right now available and strongly encouraged to do that to shoot for at least 10 moles, even under low light conditions. And if the light is bad and there is no supplemental light, to consider how long it will take uh, for flowering. And then, of course, also to consider the temperature and not grow them cool under poor light, because then they, they're going to take forever, not forever, but uh, 90 days, for example. One other thing that's important. 10 moles is kind of the sweet spot. If the light is at 13 moles, they flower maybe three days quicker. And if it's at, let's say, 19 moles compared to 10 moles, it's maybe only five days. So it's really important to get to 10 moles. More is good, but not necessary. Thanks very much for joining. I hope the presentation was informative and helpful for you. It was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.